for today's project, we are gonna make this mailbox smart so we can tell whenever mail gets delivered to our home. And we're gonna do that by putting a smart door and window sensor on the lid so that whenever it's open and mail is delivered, it will notify our phones and do other automations with our smart home. Now, the first problem is obviously the elements. We're outside, so that's why I'm gonna mount the sensor onto the inside of the mailbox to help keep it out of the elements. The second problem is that we are about 80 feet from the house, so distance is an issue here where normal sensors probably won't have the range to reach this mailbox. Now, on top of that, my home assistant hub is in the basement with a concrete foundation that we have to get the signal through. And on top of that, even further, is that this is a metal mailbox, which will act like a, a Faraday cage and block any signal coming in and out between the sensor and my home assistant hub. So any normal sensor like a Wi-Fi or a Zigbee or a thread sensor that uses 2.4 gigahertz would definitely not make the distance. Z-Wave, on the other hand, is a sub gigahertz radio, which helps penetrate things like metal and concrete. And they have a new Z-Wave long range standard that can go hundreds of feet in distance. So we're gonna use Z-Wave long range for this application. And conveniently, Home Assistant now has the Home Assistant Connect ZWA2, which is their new Z-Wave long range radio. So we're gonna use this to set up a brand new Z-Wave long range instance in Home Assistant. And then we will use a Zoo's ZSE41 sensor, which is their 800 series Z-Wave long range sensor that they claim can go up to 1300 feet. And conveniently enough, they also have a weatherproof cover for it. So with these two combined, we are gonna make our mailbox smart. Let's go. Nabucasa is the hardware arm of the Open Home Foundation, which develops and maintains Home Assistant. The Connect ZWA2 is the second piece of smart home equipment that we've come out with with antennas built in, and it's following up on the success of last year's ZBT1 Zigbee and Thread USB stick. Unlike the ZBT1, the Z-Wave ZWA2 uses a two-piece design with a pole that screws into a base. The base contains a USB-C port to connect to your Home Assistant hub, and they include a USB-A to USB-C cable. Now, you've probably noticed by now, this Z-Wave antenna is much larger than their USB stick Zigbee equivalent. For better or worse, the Nabucasa team has clearly taken a function over form approach to the ZWA2. The good news is the placement in your home is only limited by the length of the USB-C cable that you use to connect it to your hub. But you'll definitely wanna to talk to your significant other about where you place the ZWA2 since it's not very discreet. Or perhaps you could come up with some clever ways to help disguise it and blend in this 11 and a half inch long antenna into your decor. Now the good news is they've made it very plug and play so let's see what it's like connecting this to my Home Assistant hub. I have my Home Assistant Yellow, which I run Home Assistant on, and the ZWA2. And they claim this is a plug and play affair. So I'm gonna take the USB cable that was included and plug it into the back of the Home Assistant Yellow. Of course, it's USB-A on this end, so you gotta figure out which direction it goes, like so. This end is USB-C. We'll plug it in right here. And in theory, it will be automatically discovered via Home Assistant. You can see the light on top is flashing. And what could be a little tricky here is I already do have one Z-Wave instance set up. I'm hoping to run this alongside. Let's see, Add Hub. That's where I go with Recommended Installation. I would assume, since I did not have ZWA2, or if I did not have a Z-Wave network already, it would automatically prompt for this, but here we go. Here's the ZWA2. I'm gonna submit this. All right, cool. Yeah, Home Assistant Connect ZWA2. It is in the basement. And we will finish. All right, here it is. Yeah, so that easy. Plug and play, the antenna is lighting up blue. So the antenna is now a solid kind of bluish color. Supposedly if you tilt it sideways, 
it might flash at you to indicate, uh, yep, okay, yep. So it's flashing to indicate, it's flashing yellow to indicate it's not an ideal scenario. We'll turn that back vertical. Yep, now it's happy again. Look, you can enable a tilt indicator. And you can actually control the LED also to turn it on and off. If you were to have this somewhere sitting out, you don't want to be disturbed by it. So that's, that's a nice feature. All right, so that was easy. Installing the ZW2 is a plug and play affair. It's added to my Home Assistant instance. Now let's go out to the mailbox and try to pair our Zoo's contact sensor. All right, now that our radio is set up inside in Home Assistant and everything looks good there, we're gonna to try to pair our sensor to it. We're out here at the mailbox doing it where it's gonna be installed. So we're gonna go into the Home Assistant app, settings, devices. I'm gonna scroll down to the Z-Wave integration. Now, once again, it's a little different for me because I did not remove my other one. You can migrate it if you want to do that, but I'm going to go into the new ZWA2, and then I'm going to, oops, let me go back actually, go into this. Now I'm going to go add a device. It's going to ask me to scan the QR code. It's on the back of the sensor. It's also on the manual. Okay, and it's gonna prompt me, do I want to use a regular mesh network or long range? So in this case, I want long range because we're, once again, that's the whole point of doing this. We're out here at the mailbox. So I'm gonna say that this is in the front yard. Go ahead and name it as mailbox, done, add it. This is what Z-Wave calls smart start, by the way. You do that before you pull the battery tab. Now it's asking for me to pull the battery tab. And based on that QR code, it should pick this up. Bam. That was actually really quick picking that up. There it is. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the waterproof case while it is interviewing it. The interview process basically finds out all the, the capabilities and the settings for a sensor in Z-Wave. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and put that there. Go ahead and snap the back of my waterproof case onto this, like so. All right. So, in the Home Assistant app, Looks like it's asleep. So everything's showing unknown right now. I'm going to just kind of cycle this real quick with the magnet to see if it pulls in the current state. Yep, there it goes. So now it's picking up the current state is open. I put this magnet back. It should so show closed and open. And the, the response is very quick. I'm not sure why there's two entities for the window and then the this regular position and tilt position, but we can look at that in a little bit. So everything is great here. So we got no connectivity issues. Everything is working very quickly. And that looks good. So now I'm gonna work on mounting this inside here, getting it in line. As you can see, our contact sensor is not inside the mailbox like I originally planned. After I installed it, there was not reliable enough signal to get through our metal mailbox to go 80 feet into the house, into the basement where our home assistant Z-Wave radio is. So I now have it mounted on the outside of the mailbox, inside its weatherproof case. The magnet is on the lid to the mailbox, so that opens and closes. Seems to be registering fine on the sensor itself. Signal strength, even on the outside of the mailbox, still isn't great. It's like negative 108 dBm, asking it to go 80 feet through concrete walls into the basement to the Z-Wave radio. Seems like a bit of a stretch, but it is registering most of the time when this opens and closes. So let's go create a couple automations based on our mail getting delivered. All right, so now we're gonna go into Home Assistant and create our automation to notify our phone and do a voice announcement whenever the mail is delivered. So we'll go to settings, automations and scenes, choose create automation, create new. Then for our trigger, we're gonna choose entity state and find our mailbox window entity, or door and window entity, so right here. We'll choose when it goes from closed to open. So 
that trigger will start our automation. We're not gonna do any conditions at this point. Then under then, then do section, we'll go to add an action. Scroll down to notifications. The top option for send a notification. We'll choose, we'll do with you've got mail. Some of the millennials uh, might get that reference. So that'll be the notification to our phone. And then we're also gonna do a TTS or text to speech with the cloud. This is how I do my voice announcements. And I'm gonna do this on my office Sonos and use the same phrase, you've got mail. You've got mail. Now, one other thing I'm gonna add here, our mail usually gets delivered about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. I'm gonna add a delay here, that way it doesn't trigger this again when somebody from our family goes and actually gets the mail, so opens that, that door again and, and closes it. So I'm gonna add about a, an eight hour delay, that way it, this, it pushes this automation out past that time and we'll reset it kind of by the, the next day. So I had eight hours there. And we'll save it. And then we'll use uh, this AI suggestion on how to name it. Do, 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 do. Yep, mailbox notification notifies you when the mailbox is open, announces it via TTS, perfect. And we'll add it to a category, my notifications and announcement category for my automations and save it. Now we'll get our notification to our phone and a voice announcement over our Sonos speaker whenever we get mail.